Hey, good morning. This is Sandy from So It's Fabulous, and we're talking today about Silhouette Pattern 1100 Ellen's Jacket. So I'm making this jacket out of leather. Well, it's actually a faux leather. Um, I just want to go through some of the steps of the process. This is my muslin. Now, I always make a muslin of um, a new pattern. I you don't I don't put any of the details in just the basic pieces the front the back the sleeves and a couple of adjustments that I had to make I have a kind of a hollow here so I had to take this in quite a bit I took this section in I haven't taken this one in so you can see the difference in how much bigger it is here I'm only going to use this side for my pattern and also because I'm more boxy than the way Peggy's patterns are made I had to kind of let this side seam out a little bit and I'm going to make that adjustment on the paper pattern but one of the things that I have to do for pretty much all of my patterns is make this back slash adjustment in the shoulder area I have a little bit of a curve in my spine and I need more room in this area so basically what you do is you make a split from the seam allowance to but not through all the way over to the other seam allowance and you can see because I don't have a sleeve in there I made it all the way to the seam allowance which is three-eighths of an inch on this pattern and then let this fall this collar will come up and you'll know if you need this adjustment because you'll always feel like you have to keep pulling your jacket forward because what happens is the jacket kind of creeps down because you need the space here so that's one of the adjustments that I have to make pretty much on every pattern that I have. So I've made that adjustment. The sleeve is great. The back hangs nice and straight. There's no sway back adjustment. I just need some room um, around the circumference. And then also, like I said, I needed to take some out in here in the princess seam. So I've done that and I've trimmed my seam allowance. So this is going to have a zipper and, and it's the sleeve is a little snug, but it's okay because the leather the faux leather has got some stretch to it and you want your jacket to kind of fit snugly anyway so this is going to have a zip up front and some pocket details so hopefully this will all work out you'll see soon all right here we are i'm getting ready to cut out this uh, really nice stretch cordobin it's kind of like an embossed faux leather it's got a little bit of stretch to it and I have my pieces from my muslin laid out on the table. One of the things I didn't mention is that I sh ended up shortening, shortening the sleeve an inch. What I do, because I use these muslin pieces, I don't like to cut into my pattern pieces, but I do overlay them on top of the muslin pieces to make sure that I get the grain line right and then I have to transfer any marks that I need. And I need to make sure I leave enough room for a second one of these. This jacket calls for a lining. I'm not going to line it, but I, but I do need the facing on the inside so when you open it up you see the leather and not the black. So I want to see that on the back. So I have all of the pieces lined up and you can see I mentioned that I needed to straighten out the seam and, and give it a more boxy shape because I'm more boxy. So I added an inch down at the bottom to each of the underarm pieces where the side seam is, and I'm gonna cut that a little bit bigger. And I can shape this if I wanna add a little curve to it when I try it on, I can do that afterwards. And then the other thing you'll see, don't you love all this funky muslin pieces, is that this is where I added that split in the top of the back. So it's on the center back piece, you can see it there, and on the side back piece. So it basically just extended these pieces, but on this one it extended it into a triangle, and this is a continuation of a triangle. So it, it goes, it's just a big dart that goes across the back. So I am lucky enough that I have this great big table and I can lay all of these pieces out. And then in addition to that, I have to make sure I leave space for the collar pieces. And this jacket also has uh, shoulder pads, which I didn't mention, but when you fit the muslin, you need to put the shoulder pads in. You want to make sure that that's the case. And then what I do is I store all of my pieces and my muslin pieces in a big plastic bag because, you know, they never fit back in those, those paper containers. And I also make notes. So on the notes, I have the pattern muslin. There's the date. I added two inches at the bottom on the side seams and I graded it from the arm. I did a backslash adjustment. Um... I took in uh, from the shoulder to the bust, I took in that section and I shortened the sleeves 
And then this is the fabric that it's backwards, so you won't be able to read it, but I'll put it in the description. So yeah, so now we're ready to cut, and I'm pretty excited about that. So the next thing you should see is some construction details. Woohoo! Okay, so I have everything cut out right now. I have way back over there in the back, I have a pile of scraps, which I will save for another use because they're always great to use on little things. And I put away the collar, put aside the collar and the facing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay out all the pieces. Uh, I wanna make sure that they go the way they're supposed to go. So this is the front. So I'm going to lay this out like this. So this way when I go to sew them, I will actually make sure that I sew them together correctly. This is the sleeve, so we'll set that aside for now. This is the center back. So I'm going to make that the middle. Put this away. I'm gonna save these in case I decide to make this jacket again, and I have my pattern pieces all set. So this is the center back. Move the center fronts out to the edge, and the center back is going to go right in the middle. Center back, all right, because that's going to get sewed together. And then this next piece is the side front, so that's going to get stitched to that, and this is going to get stitched to this. So, uh, process of elimination, uh, this has to be the, sorry, I got those mixed up. See, that's why we do this. This is the side front, and this is the side back. And you can tell because the side front has this bus curve in here. All right. So this is how these pieces are laid out. So this is the front. So you can see. All right, so everything is cut out now and I've laid all the separate pieces across the table. I've set aside the collar and the facings and all the little other pieces aside for now because right now we're just gonna construct the front of the jacket. So this is the center front and then this is the side front, side back, center back, and then reverse it, center back, side back, side front, center front. Now it's all laid out across my table so I can sew it together, pick it up two pieces at a time, and that way I don't mess up how the pieces are actually sewed together. Okay, so the back pieces are done. I have the center back, two center back pieces here, and the side back pieces are sewn together. And um, the, you know, if you haven't tried a princess seam garment, you should. They're fabulous. They fit so well and they go together great. They just take a little bit of patience and construction. Um, I haven't pressed them yet and I think I'm probably gonna surge the seams, but I won't do that until after I try it on. One of the things I wanted to mention because this is, it's faux leather, pins are a little iffy. This fabric actually pins pretty well, but, and it's a little, and it's forgiving. It kind of heals itself, but test it to make sure and put the pins within the seam allowance. So if you have to pin, and you don't need a lot of pins, I don't use a lot of pins, but I do have one at the beginning and one at the end of each seam. Um, and for some of the curvier seams, if you're fitting that convex and concave seam together, then you might need a couple of more pins. But, but put the pin in the seam allowance, you'll be perfectly fine. All right, so here we go. This is the jacket. We have the basic body of the jacket constructed and it's interesting to see this side has the shoulder pad in it. It calls for a one inch shoulder pad and this, this is in this side and you can see how much better this shoulder looks than that shoulder. And um, I know a lot of women don't want to wear shoulder pads because you think about like dynasty and the, but really it makes such a huge difference in the jacket. So I didn't add the pocket detail on here. I thought it was too much. It was a little too busy for me. Um, I think it's a cute detail. And all of the changes that I made in the muslin are reflected in this. You can see, if you look, I added on the side here. And if you look, you can see that that's nice and straight, going all the way down. And then the back looks terrific. I just kind of lightly pressed it. 
And again, like I said, if you haven't tried princess seams before, you really should try them because they make a huge amount of difference on an item. So the next step is to put the zipper and the sleeves in. Okay, I have the sleeves together. They look great. It's a two-piece sleeve, which is really nice because it gives you a little bit of bend at the elbow, which is more like the shape of your arm. And for a jacket, it's pretty important. Now, one of the things that Silhouette Patterns does is they add tie interfacing into the sleeve to uh, assist in making the sleeve cap. So this is tie, inter it's just interfacing that goes in ties and it's a heavy kind of interfacing. You cut it on the bias so it has some stretch. And uh, she has some videos about this and how to do it and I will link them uh, to the bottom of this video. But basically you stitch this on and you stretch this without stretching the sleeve and it forms a cap. And I'll show you what a nice sleeve cap it forms when after I finished. All right, we have sewn in the tie interfacing into the sleeve on the wrong side of the sleeve and you can baste it in there. And you wanna make sure that, especially if you're working with something like leather where you don't wanna to have to take the stitches out and leave holes, that you stay with inside the seam allowance. But you can see that that makes a nice cap. It takes, instead of doing like, what they used to do, like double rows of stitching and drag it in, you sew this in and you stretch the tie interfacing while you're stitching it and it just brings a really nice ease into this and you won't even see that once it's stitched into the fab once it's stitched into the armhole now when i put sleeves on i tend to lay everything out because i'm always afraid i'm going to put things on the wrong way so i have marked where my very gingerly marked where my side seam is and where my shoulder seam is on uh, this sleeve and I will lay it down the right way, the way I know it's supposed to look when the jacket is completed. And that way I know that I've got right sides together and um, it's gonna go together the right way. I'm not gonna put a sleeve on backwards, which is kind of important with a two-piece sleeve. You don't want it backwards. So then when I pick this up, I can mark this pin with the shoulder seam. See, there's the pin and the shoulder seam. I have the two right sides together, and I know that this is how this is gonna go together. And I have lost my pins, there we go. And I am going to put a pin, and I'm just gonna pin in the seam allowance here to mark this. And hold them together because then what I want to do is I want to pick this all up and start matching the pieces together. And when you sew in a sleeve, you want to put the sleeve down towards the bottom of the feed dogs and put the rest of your jacket or your blouse or whatever you're sewing up the top because the feed dogs will drag this a little faster underneath. So what happens is it'll like, it'll ease it in all on its own without even trying. So if you have a little bit of ease there, it will help feed that sleeve in the right way. So we're gonna go put the sleeves in. Well now, the sleeves are in. They've been sewn in, surged, and look fabulous. So you have this really nice whoop, sleeve cap. You need a good press. It's gonna be hard to do because I can't press this side of the leather. But once they're pressed, they will be perfect. Almost done with this jacket, uh, collar and zipper. And then a hem and then we're good to go. I'm pretty excited about it. It's been a pretty easy project so far and I would recommend giving it a try. Okay, we are almost finished. This is great. We have a lining completed and this is lining has a little bit of stretch in it because the fabric of the jacket has some stretch so we want it to have some give plus I love a stretch lining so you can see that the facing piece is the same as the fashion fabric it's the leather and we've constructed it basically the same way except this the edge has been finished off on the lining portion not on the facing portion because that's how we're gonna finish the front of our jacket 
and we've added in the sleeves. One of the things that you don't have to worry about on the sleeves is making them nice and smooth. You want them smooth down here around the bottom, so I pin all the notches at the bottom. Let me show you the inside. So I pin the notches here, and I pin to make sure that the sleeve, the back, the bottom of the sleeve, and these pieces are all in the right place. And then I match up the notch at the top. But then as I go around, we want this part, this bottom part, nice and smooth, because that's going to be under your arm, and you don't want any bulk there. But up here, you can ease, you can just ease in that extra fabric in the sleeve cap because we need, there's a little thread that's bothering me, because we need to have that space in there. We need to have that room. The other thing we need to do is we need to finish our um, uh, shoulder pads. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of your lining fabric and you are going to lay your shoulder pad. This is a one inch shoulder pad. You're going to lay it inside and fold it up and make a little sandwich. So you have the shoulder pad and the lining and then you're going to surge I just put a couple of pins to hold it in place as I'm getting through to the serger so this part this folded part is the folded part of the the pad you can see the shoulder pad you can see it lays flat in there like that I have threads everywhere today this is gonna get folded like that and then I just surge all the way around the edge and what you have is a shoulder pad that looks like this so it's actually in the lining fabric and when it's in the jacket it just looks so much more expensive for five minutes worth of work. When you take your jacket off, you don't have this raw white shoulder pad in there. You have a regular shoulder pad that matches the lining of your jacket. And that's what gives it a high-end custom look. So now I'm going to finish off the other shoulder pad, and I am going to attach my lining to my jacket. Okay, our next job is to put in the zipper in the front, and I've already done this side of the jacket. I have a 24 inch separating zipper. It has a 21 inch opening so it's a little bit long but we'll take that off when we put the collar on. So the zipper comes apart. All right, so it's a two-piece zipper and you have a couple of options. You can, in the instructions it tells you to take the edges of the facing and the front of the jacket and glue them down so they're folded in and then insert the zipper in between and top stitch it. I find that that's a little bit tricky sometimes so I prefer to anchor my zipper in and then go back and do my top stitching all at the same time. So what I'm going to do, first I'm going to make sure my zipper is the right way because that would be awful if it was the wrong way. Okay so I know that this is the front of my zipper and this is the bottom and this piece is actually gonna get anchored inside there. So I'm just going to pin it just ever so on the edge, not through the glue, which is why I don't like using glue, it gets sticky. All right, so now I know that's how that goes in. And I'm gonna open up this whole side of the jacket and reverse it. going to pin my zipper inside between the front of the jacket and the facing and you can put a pin on this now because it's, this is actually going to be encased inside the seam allowance. I'm just going to pin it here so it won't move. And then I'm actually going to fold the edges of the jacket and the casing around the zipper. And just pin them to the edge all the way down so it's encased inside and I also want to make sure this is at the same stopping point as the other side all right so I've pinned my zipper in between my the front of my jacket and my facing my zipper is in there matching the edge of the seam allowance of the zipper and the seam allowances and I just want to make sure that this corner and I can turn it around because my pins are going this the way the seam allowance I just want to turn this in and make sure that when I match it up to this zipper that's already attached that they look to good together. They're balanced and they're even. So I don't know if you can see that. There they are. So they're balanced and they're even. I mean they need to be top stitched but 
that's how it's going to look when it's finished and then we're going to actually run an edge top stitch so this is good to go all right so i stitched up this side stitched it all the way to the neckline so i've got the facing and the front of the jacket with a zipper sandwiched in between i'm going to turn it inside right you can see i've caught the zipper Let's see, I've cut the zipper in the bottom there and pretty much evenly all the way around as I snickety. There we go. All right. You can see my match, my bottoms match, and there's a good spacing in between each side of the front of the jacket and the zipper. And when I do my top stitching, I'll top stitch this down and it'll lay nice and flat. And in the, in the process, I'll be connect, catching the back because the facing is already attached to the zipper. So that's my preferred method of putting in an exposable zipper. Certainly there are other ways to do it, but I think this is the easiest one. And then it gives you an opportunity to go back and top stitch and it's nice and even and you're just dealing with smoothing out the fabric, not trying to hold all the pieces together at the same time. All right, on to the collar. All right, we're getting ready to put our collar together. So we have two collar pieces and we have two collar stand pieces. And with this pattern, we're going to attach the collar stand to the collar, each piece. And then once we do that, we're gonna put them right sides together and attach them together to make a collar. Okay, here we have our collar pieces sewn together. The collar is sewn to the stand. I did serge this because it is uh, faux leather and it's very difficult to get it to press. So what I did was I serged it and then I did a really narrow top stitch and I did one side to the stand and then one side to the collar. This, this will be the upper collar and the one that has the stitching will be on the collar side, will be the under collar. And then I stitched both pieces together and you wanna stitch all the way across and stitch off and then stitch all the way down this corner and then this corner. So you wanna do them each separately. And then I surged them. And we're gonna turn them. And one of the things you wanna do when you turn a corner is you wanna fold down one seam and then fold in the other seam. So on this side, you can already see that there's a really nice little corner there. And then I'm going to grab those folds between my fingers and turn it and that will give you a great corner. So we're going to do it again on this side. I'll do it closer to the camera. So you're going to fold down one side and then we're going to fold down the other side. So you already can see that there's a nice point there. And then we're going to grab the folds from the inside and push them through to the other side. Now there's a lot of fabric here because it's, it is leather. And this one actually, we're gonna do it again. So fold down one side, fold down the other side. And then turn it through. And there again, you can see we have a nice point. That one needs a little work, but it's still pretty good. It needs a little work. And then we're going to uh, top stitch this. So now we're gonna add this to the jacket. And then after it's added on, we're gonna top stitch everything all together. And then the only thing left is the hem and to insert the shoulder pads. When we go to put this on the jacket, we're going to turn this under 3 eighths of an inch and then sandwich the jacket right inside there. Alrighty, it's collar time. So I have attached the under collar stand to the jacket. Before I did that, I did attach the lining at the neckline to the lining to the facing of the jacket just so it wouldn't shift around. And I only had one layer to add to this collar stand. And you want to carry it over the zipper and at this point you have zipper extension here that's going on you just want to take an old pair of scissors and trim that in between the teeth and trim it to the same length as the seam allowance so it's out of the way so you don't need that 
And then um, what I do, the way I prefer to do it, is to stitch the underside of the collar to the jacket. And then we're going to bring the rest of the collar over. You're going to encase the edge of the zipper. And we're gonna turn this under. And when we top stitch, I put a little tiny pin in there. And when we top stitch on this side, we're gonna make sure that we catch this edge of the facing on the jacket. Normally, I would hand stitch this down, but on the leather, I think it's going to be too difficult. I might give it a try. I will, um, I'll let you know. And then we're gonna go around and top stitch the edges. And the other thing that's left to do is to add in the um, shoulder pads. So what I'm going to do with the shoulder pads is they go, this one's curving this way, so they get stitched to the lining. So we're gonna stitch them here at the center. I'm just gonna take a little tack there and a little tack on either side of the shoulder and then one tack up here and I'll just do that by hand. You could also stitch them to the underside of the lining and use the machine if you wanted to stitch them to the seam allowance, but it doesn't take that long to do them by hand and I kind of like the look uh, here. If you want to bury them, sometimes on the jacket I will bury them, but I didn't want to sew them to the pleather on the inside on this one. So we will be finished very soon. All right, let's talk a little bit about the sleeve and how we're gonna line it. I have my lining and my sleeve, and it's a two-piece sleeve, and I wanna make sure that it's the lining is situated the correct way in the sleeve. And then I'm just going to pin the sleeve and the lining together at both of the seam joints here, just so I make sure that I don't get it twisted, because I'm going to go up through the bottom of the jacket, and I'm going to pull the lining and the sleeve through. All right, and now you can see they're pinned together, so I know that they're gonna be in the right spot. I do need to repin them because I want, they're pinned wrong sides together. I wanna to pin the right sides together. So I'm gonna match up both of the seams from the under sleeve here. And I do like to make my sleeves go in the opposite directions, the seams. You get a better fit. So you can see I have this uh, seam on the sleeve going this way and the seam on the lining going the other way. And I dropped my pin. So this is kind of fiddly work. But what you're gonna do is you're going to pin the sleeve right sides to the lining all the way around and stitch it. And then when you turn it inside right, your sleeve will already be hemmed and it'll have a really nice finish on the inside. So we'll see it in a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a little tour of the inside of my leather jacket. So you can see this is the internal facing and the zipper has been sandwiched between the facing and the front end of the jacket. Here we have the collar stand and the collar. We have some really fine top stitching. That's one of the things that is going to make a difference making your piece look like it's ready-made or custom made as opposed to homemade. The sleeve lining, we just put the gathers in there. You don't need to ease that in. You just need the fullness so the gathers are fine. And then I have my shoulder pad is exposed, but I did cover it with the same covering as the lining, which is a stretch lining, which is kind of nice because the uh, faux leather has a little bit of a stretch to it, so it has some give. And then the sleeves are stitched right to the lining they're stitched together, they're bagged together, which gives you a nice smooth edge on the sleeve. There's no hand stitching or gluing, so that works out really well. The back is pretty simple. It's the same as the jacket. 
I put a label, one of my labels in it. And then as you go down the bottom of the jacket, you can see that the hem is riding just above the edge of my coat. There we go. Just above the edge of the coat and it's tacked. I actually did a little tack right to the seams. So in case it does get a little stretchy and a little longer, then it won't hang. So there is the inside of my finished leather coat. Yahoo! And here's a quick tour of the outside of the leather jacket. We have an exposed zipper, some thoughtful top stitching on the collar. This is a two-piece zipper, which is great. And it comes up from the bottom. I, one of the details I like about this jacket is the way the zipper and the edge of the jacket finish off. That's kind of interesting. So that's a nice detail. Then we have the princess seaming, two-piece sleeve. This is a little rumply here in the sleeve for the fitting, but you know, once I put it on, you don't even see it.